all right what is up everybody so I decided to do a video on uh, my budget unkillable team and then uh, like I'll just I'll run through and have it kind of running while I talk and then uh, once it finishes I'll go through and show you each one of my uh, character stats and basically what I found um, what I found to work the best and uh, basically yeah kind of just go over the whole team so this first part of it um, you got to do manually uh, it's basically a3 on um, man eater to get that whole unkillable um, and block debuffs buff going and then on painkeeper you want to make sure that you use her um, a3 uh, for your DPS champions and your slow champion um, you can pretty much use um, whatever ability you want except for Frozen Banshee which I'll show you in a second um, so you do A1 on the second turn for Painkeeper not A2 um, and then this time around again just A1 now this is what um, makes a difference this you want to use your A1 because if you use your A2 it boosts turn meter of everybody and that can throw Painkeeper's um, speed off so just do A1 and then this is where you're gonna you wait till that um, unkillable buff comes off of painkeeper and then you're going to use your a2 which heals everybody up and from there you should be able to hit auto and then it should go auto through now Othar takes a few stuns here in the beginning only because of the way that the damage it, um, increases over time so right now in the first early stages there's not enough damage to get a cult brawler low enough to start taking the stuns but it's fine because Othar is healthy enough with the heal from Painkeeper to take those stuns. So it doesn't really affect anything. Um, and you'll see as the uh, as the rounds go up you'll start to see that a Call Brawler is going to start taking those stuns. Um, so for this setup I used a Call Brawler instead of Kale. Uh, if you follow Cold Brew's video he will show you basically um, using Kale. But uh, a Call Brawler just worked better for me. I didn't have a Kale leveled up. Um, so that time you could see a Call Brawler took a stun, which is good. And then uh, everything else should kind of just go like clockwork from here. Um, one thing you did probably notice at the beginning of this is um, Painkeeper was taking a lot of AoE damage in the beginning because she would go before that second AoE, AoE. but now you can see on turn 11 um, she no longer goes before that second AoE which is what you want. Uh, other than that uh, another good tactic using this team is to have Frozen Banshee as the lead because she gives everybody an additional 35 um, accuracy and for this comp really all you need is their accuracy up over 200 you know I think around 200 or 220 is probably better but as high as you can get it basically within reason and then um, that, that's about it so the speeds that everyone's running at which I'll show you all their setups and their exact stats but um, I have Painkeeper or Painkeeper is going at 240 um, Maneater is going at um, 250 or 256 I believe we can check in a second and then um, Frozen Banshee and Othar are going at about 189 I think he's 189 she might be 187 again we'll see in a little bit and then uh, the slow champion here uh, called Brawler is going at 124 so a few a few things that I did find that weren't consistent in Cold Brew's video one the major thing which cost me kind of a lot of resources in the beginning could, before I figured it out is that if you want your slow champion to take your stun which of course you do you need to have his HP the highest on the team which means it has to be higher than um, pain keepers and pain keepers health has to be around 50,000 I think in Cold Brew's video it was like 51,000 and he had his Kale at 43,000 HP so I don't know how he was getting it to work maybe um, in one of the updates uh, the AI targeting um, you know maybe they, they changed the way that they target and um, they must have so if you want this to work you have to have your slowest champ um, the highest HP and then 
Another thing is just make sure that the slow champ does not have any, actually really, pain keeper, man eater, and your slow champion. You do not want to have any kind of turn meter um, boost in their uh, masteries at all. You don't want anything that's going to mess with the turn meter because once you get this flowing right, you don't want to have anything go out of sync. So you want everybody that has the consistent turn meter um, and then it'll work perfect. Um, I had a cold brawler built up on my original, um, like my normal clan boss team before, and because of that, I had masteries on him that actually did increase turn meter, had a chance to, so I was like having runs that weren't being consistent, which was really annoying in the beginning. Another thing that I had on Painkeeper, which to get 240 speed, I had her uh, mastery set up to give her additional speed for the hat for wearing the speed sets. And using that, I found it kind of inconsistent. Like when I used um, Dead Eye um, or Deadwood Jedi's site there, um, I used the speed calculator. And with the mastery setup, it doesn't really give you the exact speed. It's it's close. So instead of 240, it was like um, 239 and like some change or something. It's like really close. And I got it to work like that for most runs, but I noticed every once in a while. Painkeeper would be a little too slow to do her heal before the stun and then one of the other champions would end up taking a stun and die. So I ended up taking those masteries off of her and just getting the speed that I needed through her gear and I've it since then um, the runs have been much more consistent. So I would definitely suggest doing that for, for Painkeeper and for man eater just to make sure that you get the exact speeds that you want uh, i don't think it matters too much for these uh, for your dps's set though but you definitely want to try to get the most accurate speed you can um, using the speed calculator does help a lot um but yeah uh for for pain keeper i think i have her right below 50 50 000 health and for um a call brawler i have him a little over 50,000 health, like maybe 51 or something. And then Frozen Banshee and Othar and Maneater too. I think all of these guys are right around like 30,000 health or something like that. Um, Maneater might have a little bit more, maybe like 40 something thousand, but I'll show you all their stats in a minute. Um, as you can see though, this works really, really well. This is Ultra Nightmare. My team power is like 109 or 110,000. It's really low, and yet with this setup, you can easily three key um, Ultra Nightmare, which is what I've been doing with this. This is my third key of the day. Um, I was at I think like 54,000. So yeah, we're we're already we're already there. Um, as long as you have enough accuracy, this this really only works if you have the, enough accuracy on your DPS champions in order to get the poison and poison sensitivity on there. Um, but with her in the lead, you get 35 additional, so you really want to just try to get everybody up to, you know, like 180 accuracy if you can, a little bit, like that would probably work. I don't think, I don't think any of these guys really have too much more than like 200 accuracy. Um, with the boost, probably like, maybe like 220, so they very rarely get resisted. And this setup works extremely well. The only downside to this, because I put so many resources into it and you need such high speeds, if you don't have a lot of gear, you're going to str struggle to get that speed and or you're going to have to do like what I did and basically totally destroy your arena team in order to get this to work. And this only works on Ultra Nightmare if you set it up to the speeds for that. I mean, you can speed tune it down to um, Nightmare, but if you do that, you're going to lose you're, gonna, you're not, you're not going to be able to change gear back and forth, so you kind of have to um, just keep it on Ultra Nightmare. But yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's three keys, 110k power, which is hilarious. This guy has actually got the same team, a um, little more power, but I'm doing more damage than he is, I'm assuming, because I have more accuracy. Um, yeah, but easily three key it, no problem at all, as long as, um, as, long as you get to it before the affinity changes. And even if the affinity changes, you just need to switch out your slow champ to be a negative affinity. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look, take, a, take a look at the champs. 
Um, like I said, I call Brawler. He's my slow champ. Uh, I got him at 51,000 health and 124 speed. 124 speed is what you want. Um, his defense is only like 1,300. I don't have any like crit damage or anything like that on it. Doesn't really matter. His accuracy is what matters. So he has 243 accuracy. He's actually got way more accuracy than I thought. So he's got 22 accuracy through his masteries, uh, 15 from the Great Hall, which isn't much. I, my Great Hall's not really looking that great. But I got a lot of um, accuracy in his artifacts. Um, Pain Keeper is another key component here. Like I said, I have her at 240, and I just changed out her masteries to no longer give her additional speed. Now she has all of the additional speed through her artifacts. You have to get 240 speed exactly. If you don't, then it's just not going to work. I've tried um, in the, a few times in the beginning I tried with like speeds really close to this and it just didn't work. She's at 49,000 HP and that seems to be enough to get her through those first few AoE attacks um, depending on RNG and like how the uh, the crits go maybe she might die out in the beginning so just kind of watch, watch the team until it gets into its flow at like turn 11 after that it should be fine to just watch and have it auto um, Frozen Banshee, I didn't change much from the original build that I had in my, my first um, my first setup. So she has 187 speed, so yeah, she's not really at 189. Uh, I think it's between 187 and 189 to make it work, but 187 is working fine for me. She has 30,000 health and 211 accuracy. So again, you want to try to get like 200 accuracy on all these guys. Um, I don't really, I haven't even maxed out my accuracy banner. She's wearing an accuracy chest, which is why she has so much accuracy. Um, and then Man Eater. Man Eater was a tough one. I don't even have him fully ascended yet, so he's got no speed on his banner. I just kind of lucked out and had a lot of speed gear up here with like three rolls. I got 25 speed from that one helmet. All speed gear. Um, again, I <laughs> destroyed my um, arena team for this, but. I got him to 256, so he's sitting at 256 speed and 37,000 health. So yeah, he's got a little more health than some of the other guys. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Othar. Othar was the other one. So Othar, he's at 189. So I got him right at 189, 34,000 HP. Seems to be doing fine, and he's my got my lowest accuracy actually. He has 186. But that's why I actually add him as my lead at first, kind of mess everything up. Because um, I didn't realize Frozen Banshee's um, accuracy, I didn't realize her aura um, worked everywhere, but it's all battles 35. So with her, um, with her boost, he actually starts landing everything. So 35 pretty much gets him over that 200 mark, which is great. Um, he he very he's the only one that'll sometimes get resisted, but other than that, it's it's been working like a charm. Um, I had a lot of issues in the beginning, like I said, trying to get runs to be consistent um, due to masteries mostly, um, masteries on the Cult Brawler, masteries on Pain Keeper. Again, I can't stress enough to just try to get the speeds that you need with the artifacts and. Just make sure you're very, very careful with your masteries. Make sure there's no turn meter boost in any of your character's masteries, honestly, just to be safe. And then um, just try to make sure that you don't use this the speed from the masteries at all either, because it's just not it's not that accurate, and it can cause problems uh, with your runs. So since I've changed that out, it's worked really, really well. Um, so yeah, hopefully. The, hopefully everybody finds this video pretty useful. I know Cold Brew and Hell Hades and uh, all those guys got a bunch of info on this as well. But even following all that, I still kind of struggled to get it to work right. So I wanted to put out my own video there, kind of show you guys what I did and the different stats and different champions to uh, kind of give you a better, I know, another view of this unkillable team. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave some comments below.